Hitchhikers, I've got somebody who is a UFO investigative researcher. His name is Glenn Richardson. Hi, Glenn. Hello, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. And yourself? I'm great, thanks. Glad to be here. Thank you. No, I appreciate you coming on. It's really good. It's going to be really interesting. When did you decide that you wanted to be a UFO investigator, Glenn? Well, I've always had a, a, a great interest in ufology as, as far as I can remember. Um, since I was a little lad, I've, I've seen things in the sky that uh, I can't explain. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it could have been a possible explanation for it. But just the subject itself just uh, fascinated me. So as I grew older, I read uh, documentation, magazines, books. What sort of magazines, Glenn? Uh, UFO magazines, anything basically on the paranormal itself. Mm. Um, and I came across this uh, gentleman, this ex-retired policeman, Tony Dodd. Um, who, when he retired as a police officer, decided to become a UFO investigator. He had an experience himself. It's a fascinating book. Oh. Um, and once I read this book, um, I came up with the idea of thinking, well, you know, this is something that I could, I could do myself. Right. Um, so I started investigating claims of UFO activity myself across the UK. Right, okay. So say if I've had a what I believe to be a sighting, of a what i would say is a ufo um i ring you or contact you how do i do that and then what's the process and basically i advertise in magazines uh, i have social media my, my phone number's available um so basically if someone has a site and they can contact me either f through facebook social media or email things like that right um, so what would I do? What would the, be generally the, your most favourite report sort of style? What would it be? The distance of the craft, the shape? What sort of things would you, information would you need from me if I saw a UFO and I contacted you? As much, um, as much information as possible, really. Uh, the size, shape, distance, time, date, if there's any colours, any sound coming from the object, um, did it land? If not, direction was it moving okay. to. Do you uh, stay focused on just the UK or is it more global? I do get reports from global, um, but with regards to investigations, unfortunately, it, it is generally around the UK itself. Mm. But I do get reports from outside the UK. Okay. And do you contact any, like, um, do you contact any forces or... Uh say uh, police officers or you know the uh, do you contact airports or anything what, what... yeah depending where the uh, the site is um if it's you know i'll get in touch with the, the local uh media radio stations police stations if there's any local airports get right. in touch with them uh, military bases the same um see if um they can come with any you know if there's any witnesses come forward with them or if they know of anything that's happened around that time like air shows or things like that all oh, right okay and because of all like um at the minute i was wondering because you get all of these drones now that everyone seems to have gotten um for christmas and what have you they're getting more popular now do you find that you are receiving a lot more um case solved ufo reports now or you could, you, could, you could say that like i said there is a lot of um logical explanations for for these sightings um it's like i said before 99 percent you know probably a logical explanation and it's just that one percent that mm. you know mm. probably you know you'll never get the answer to which mm. does fascinate me and it's one that i'm most interested in mm. and i'll be honest with you i do like um to come up with the answer and the the, the public like the answers themselves regarding if it's logical or not logical explanation you know some people just want answers of what they're saying yeah of course so reports then do they come in um waves or are you getting them weekly 
at the moment it comes in waves, but uh, when I first started, um, like I mentioned earlier, I used to advertise in the, the local, not the local, sorry, the UFO magazine. Ah, oh, you um, did? And um, I, once I was, uh, that was very popular magazine and I was getting reports literally every day. Um, wow. Between five and six a day, I was very, Blimey. very busy. Yeah. Unfortunately, the editor passed away and oh. unfortunately the magazine went under. Right. So I advertise in online magazines and on social media. So I do get a lot of reports, but generally comes in waves. So with the social media then, do you find that people are reporting a lot more than they would be, say, through a magazine? You're saying that you did advertise in a magazine. Do you find that with the social medias that we've got now and more popular, it's a lot easier for people to talk about it? Or it? And, and maybe possibly do you think people accept it a lot more. What was your uh, thoughts on it, that? I think it's a, uh, a bit of both, if I'm quite honest with you. I do think a lot of people are, are accepting to it. Um, mm. You know, if, if somebody decided to do a survey, they'd probably, if I'm majority of the public, do believe that, that mm. UFOs do exist. Mm. Um, but I think with social media and things like that, it gives people more of a confidence because obviously it is hard to pick a phone up and speak to somebody. Yeah. But with yeah. social media, you can message somebody, you can, you know, so mm. you don't have to really have that. Um, contact with them if, if, if they didn't feel confident enough. Right, and so if somebody wanted to be anonymous, then you, all they have to say is that this is me, this is my story, I want to remain anonymous. Do you still keep the report? or? Yeah, I, I do keep the report. Um, mm. if, that's, if that, that's their desire, I respect that. I will never break confidentiality. Mm. That's very important. Um, but I will keep it mm. um, because you never know four years down the line I might get a couple more reports of the same time in the same area which validate that report even more if that makes sense. Right okay so some reporting then some people could wait that long before they say something about it and then you add it to the first report do you? Yeah you yeah wow, that's be, I, I've had reports of 20-30 years ago oh, um, and they just had the confidence to come forward now um, so yeah, it's not necessarily a report of the here and now. It is a report of yeah, a few years back. Oh, weird. That's well, not weird actually. I could imagine that somebody, somebody possibly might have um, their granddad's story or something. Oh, my granddad once told me about this. You know, and what have you? And then somebody else would go, well, actually, I've got a report of that uh, of that very moment. And which I'll be honest with you, it. it it is a bit harder to investigate with it being 20, 30 years ago, mm. but it does fascinate me because some of the reports I do get from that time frame, mm. the, the documentation is still vivid. They still, you know, they still remember it as if it was yesterday. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, I, I think um, if anybody saw something re really out of this world bizarre, uh, you would remember it. I think it's going to be clear as day each time you speak about it. So what's the um, most biggest... UFO report um, that you've had um, and your most favourite report that you've had? So like the biggest ship, <laughs> if there was one, is are they really <laughs> massive? And also, uh, yeah, your favourite uh, report that you've had so far today? Um, if I'm quite honest with you, regards to sizes, that they come in all shapes and sizes and there is some really um, big crafts that have been spotted. Right. Um, Regards to favourite, if I'm honest with you, I don't have a favourite, I take them all as serious. Ah. Uh, you know, from there's no no one different or, or special out there. I focus on every single case exactly exactly the same. Oh, um, such a professional, Glenn. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as regards to the UK, do we see do we seem to get the same sort of reports as what you see? Uh, you know, mainly about the USA and places like that. Um, myself, I've seen on the internet mainly they're either in Mexico, USA. Do we get the same sort of reports over here in Old Blighty in the UK? Yeah, the, the similar type of reports. Yeah, the you know same type of shapes, cigar shapes, um, orange type orbs, if you want to call them, um, similar type things like that. What about discs? Sorry? What about flying saucers? Do we get those? Uh, not really, if I'm quite honest with you. Um, 
there's, there is some bizarre shapes that uh, people have have contacted me with triangle shapes. Um, right. I haven't had discs for quite a while, if I'm honest with you. They have been different types of shapes. Like I said, the most popular is the cigar shape. Right, okay. Um, the triangle. We're going to take a little break, and after the break, I shall be telling my story of one of my experiences with a UFO. <laughs> I'm just a robot and I know my place A metal servant to the human race I work my can off trying to satisfy I know they'll disconnect me by and by Chip on my shoulder made of silicon My printed circuits like a lexicon functions maybe more they make me pick the paper off the floor was the delightful Marvin the paranoid android and now back to Glenn Richardson and my UFO story as well I uh, well um, there was one time actually uh, myself and my partner were midnight star watching shall we say and we were arguing over whether this was this bright star was actually Venus or not so I went and got my um, phone which on there is an app where you can hold your phone up and it will basically tell you what star constellation you're looking at as you move your phone it will it sort of uh it will it will go it will measure up with north south east and west and so basically you you hold your phone up and you're looking at the screen and it will show you the star constellations as you move your phone around in a circle in the air so basically you can focus on one star and it will tell you what it is so I was trying to do that and I went and got my phone and all of a sudden the battery died and I know my phone was charged because it was already in the charging spot and that charger wasn't broken afterwards either so this is really bizarre. My partner said, quick Leah, quick, 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 you've got to come out here. So I ran outside and as we were, uh, I ran out, he said what he thought were a couple of maybe swans because we live in the town centre here and there's lots of swans that fly at night but this is really strange and what he thought was a couple of swans coming up to him ended up being what I can only describe as um, two CDs right so you can imagine an amber translucent hard you could hardly see the colour it was that dull of an amber and uh, if you can imagine holding a disc and you can uh, up in the air around yeah. the outside of this cd disc was a thin line of amber color and in the middle where the center of a cd disc would be was also a thin line of um amber color and they were they were absolutely massive they took over the whole of roof of our house two of them and we just looked up and we basically were like oh my god and we saw said a few swear words as well but we just yeah. looked up at them and i I didn't have my battery on my phone had died, you see, so I couldn't take a video of it. And they went up in the air slowly. They split up in in the sky and they zoomed off into the middle of nowhere. They were going up out into the atmosphere, getting smaller and smaller. What I remember was that they flashed before they left, but my partner doesn't remember that. And uh, also, uh, we both agree with the size 
And uh, anyway, as it went up into the atmosphere, they, I believed it flashed and then they zoomed to to a tiny dot and nothing. It was as if they have gone at the most incredible speed. No noise, no nothing. What do you make of that one? <laughs> well, very interesting, if I'm, uh, <laughs> if I'm uh, quite honest with you. Yeah, um, regards to seagulls, uh, very much doubt there'd be seagulls. What time was this, sorry? This was about, say, midnight, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and it's, I think it was 2014, I think. I will have to uh, confer, because my partner's really good at remembering dates and times. But it was about then, yeah. And it was in September. Very much, um, I wouldn't say it's a bird of any sort. Um, I, I know it sounds like but like you say, the way you describe the size of it and lit over your house, you can definitely a... say it's a bird. Oh, no, um, I mean, exactly. It, from the distance of them approaching at, an, at a sideways angle, if you're looking at them as if they were coming towards you, for a minute, he said, that he thought, what the hell are they? They look like giant birds. Oh, it must be swans. Oh, my God, no, it's not. And they come over the, yeah. the roof sort of thing. And they were they were huge. They took out. They were bigger than our house, bigger than a double decker bus in length. Uh, they were huge, and they were so low above the roof. I literally could see every detail on them. And wow. we were just hoping that somebody else was outside and saw them. We were like, "Does anybody see that?" You know, and nobody answered. It was a shame because we wish. Ever since then, we've just wanted to see them again and again. We're just paranoid each time. We, not paranoid, but you just look yeah. up each time we go out in the night time now. That's um, quite fascinating, really, if I'm quite honest with you. Um, do you live anywhere near yeah. the airport? <laughs> we live near um, a lot of RAF bases, right. um, but we're not literally on the doorstep. They're like, you know, they're, I should say about 20 miles away. Well, uh, I can say I've never. The only th the only way I can describe it is that they were d saucer shaped. Yeah. Um, and I've I've literally gone online trying to look for somebody else who might have seen them, and there's been one person who has drawn someone had someone draw it for them on um, a computer program. And is they've literally drawn two circle shapes with a thin outline of the orange glow that I remember the seeing, you know, the shape. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to link you up with them. Yeah, definitely. You'd have to uh, email all the uh, information on that one because I'll see if I can uh, go back and see if um, I've got any reports around the time and everything. Yeah. Because that does seem uh, quite fascinating. I know it sounds, um, how can I put it, you know, when I, when I ask, questions of you know do you live here or mm, no yeah but that's how i generally conduct an investigation because obviously when i get a report it is basically someone spotted a ufo it is a ufo from day one you know and mm. it's it's how people receive a ufo you know as we all know it stands for unidentified flying object mm. and that's what we need to understand that's that's basically what it is mm. now until we find a logical explanation or if it is something from another world, then it's not a UFO, if that makes sense. Um, it's IFO, it's been identified. Right. Um, that's generally how I conduct an investigation. IFO. Want... IFO. Want... Sorry. Sorry, you know you said IFO, so it's identified yeah. flying object is IFO, is it? It's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not that I, you know, I don't believe in that person, but it's just how I find it easier to conduct an investigation as I try and find the logical explanation. I try and rule things out, if that makes sense. Right, okay. And, and when I rule things out, then I start looking at the possibility of, yes, it could be something else that we don't know. If that, you know yeah, something. yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, that's your, the way you investigate. It's a good way because people will be asking them those questions, wouldn't they? Yeah. You know, especially people who are listening. I mean, I will definitely tell you exactly where it was i mean i'm not going to say it on here because I'll, I'll have everyone knowing <laughs> an exact pinpoint but yeah. um, let's just say i'm quite close to where this um actually happened still so uh, i will let you know um in private i've had I've, I've also seen before i may as well just speak about a few experiences and i um yeah. another thing i saw which was um a, they were like aluminium shiny 
eggs. <laughs> And they had no noise. They weren't, they would hover. Uh, they were close, um, seen two at a time, and also one at a time as well. My partner seen one. The dog noticed it first and was looking up and barking at it. And I should say, if you were to literally hold a chicken egg and hold it at arm's length, that's how close they were and about that shape. And right. they would hover and then it would. You'd be looking at it and it'd be so bright because of the sun reflection coming off of it. Um, it was in the summertime and a couple just at the end of summertime. And it was in broad daylight. And it all of a sudden it decided it wanted to go really fast. It went to supersonic. Zoom, sort of thing. It didn't make no noise, but it's like supersonic. It moved from one side, uh, from north to east. Like within, uh, like this fast like that so it's almost yeah. invisible and then it appears somewhere else and then it went slowly and did exactly the same just kept going around us like that and then all it did was just go across uh to the top of our hill so we live on in lincoln and on top of the hill in lincoln is the cathedral and it went towards the cathedral and it went higher and higher and then i just couldn't see it anymore so that's another thing that's happened a few times we've seen those uh, oh. yeah so I know there's one that we did see, uh, which was a meteor. Um, it, uh, not, yeah, a meteor, isn't it? Is it what you yeah, yeah. It's not an asteroid, that's for sure. So it's a meteor. <laughs> uh, and we were driving down the road, and it was a it was a green glowing ball of green fire. It seemed, and it went right across the front of where we were driving at night time, over a hedge, and sort of had like this misty green mist coming from it as if it's something from from um superman movie or something <laughs> well like, that's it it's um and that's that's what i say to uh when doesn't matter, anybody who gets in touch with me you know regards of um of where we get in the investigation if if i'm happy that you know it could be a logical explanation at the end of the day this person knows what they've seen and i like yourself i think some people they generally know the difference of a star or or whatever yeah. so they actually witnessed and only that person at that time knows what they have seen and mm. it's difficult trying to get their point across because you know as investigators you do have to to look at the logical explanations you do have to try and narrow things down yeah but anyway, you know what you're seeing and it's the same with the public mm. they know what they've seen and, and no one can take that away from them. No, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'd we'll love to get together again and uh, bang heads together and I'll get you some information and then maybe we could do a report about it and share it with the listeners and maybe they'll be interested. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, um, I, uh, Glenn and I, people, listeners, our hitchhikers. Glenn and I have been speaking anyway beforehand, before we did this interview. And we were on about that maybe Glenn could come back on when he gets some reports and give us a little update on any sightings. And then maybe the listeners who may have been in the same area might have seen something, you never know. And it will get a little bit, I think it will be interesting anyway to find out uh, some updates yeah. of uh, recent sightings. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, like I said, I've got uh, I've got plenty of cases there that we, you know we can discuss and, and go through, and yeah. I'm sure uh, you know, the listeners will be uh, intrigued. Yeah. So, uh, also, uh, what do you think about what's in the news? I'm going to be doing the news in a minute, Glenn. Yeah. And it says that uh, UK UFO sightings is on a, up to an all time high. Uh, what is your take on it? Oh, definitely. Um, definitely it's on a high. Um, I don't think it's it's a new thing, if I'm honest with you. I just think uh, more and more people have got the confidence to come forward now. Mm. Um, it, it's it's a big subject. It's um, And that's one of the reasons why I have social media. I have my page to keep it in the public domain, to keep it to keep it busy. Um, mm. And I do produce, like you say, um, news readings and, and sort of press clips and, yeah. and stuff for the public so you know it, it's still in the public eye it's still there it's not mm. away mm. but I think the part and pass I think it's more and more, more and more people are having the confidence yeah. to come forward I think it's always been big in the UK it's 
Um, if I'm quite honest with you, especially in the North East, I think it's, I'm, I've been getting a lot of reports lately in the North East. Um, really? Oh, interesting. I wonder why mm. that is. I think it's just, it could be just one of them things. Like I say, it, you know, it's, you hear these reports and it's, you know, it's, it's a very popular in the UK at this time, but I don't think it's, I think it's always been popular. I just think years ago, you know, it was a stigma attached to it and people didn't have the confidence to come forward. No. We didn't have social media back then, so it wasn't as easy to come forward. Yeah. I just think it's always been there. It's just people have got the confidence now, which is great. Well, a lot of light pollution that we have at the minute in cities doesn't really help. So no. if you were lucky enough to have a r- rural spot, you, you're more guaranteed to see a lot more stars and then therefore you're going to see a lot more, clear, you know, a yeah. lot more clearer skies sometimes when you you know other than in the city center for instance mm-hmm. and uh, on uh facebook there's a lot of pages that i follow personally which are all to do with ufos around the world so yeah. sometimes they could be posting a lot of obvious cgi um mm-hmm. things because it looks like it's as as if it's from a movie and you can see all the little windows and things on the craft i mean it 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 kind of you can i'll have to post it with this um show on the page so so that people can see what i'm on about so because of cgi and the way that computer technology is getting bigger and better do you find it can be hard sometimes to say yay or nay to it being an actual look well people say oh that's a faked video is it easy for you still after having all this CGI uh, stuff going around, it can, it can be a bit difficult. But I, like I said, I do have um, friends and who do have the technology and programs where we can enhance um, footage. Ah. And it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's not to prove people wrong. It's not just for that uh, reason. But it's basically, like for for instance, when we get video footage or photographic footage that's from a distance right. and it's hard to see, it's mm. basically you can sort of take the background away and sort of enhance the picture to try and get a closer look at it. Right. To try and make out what the picture is. But obviously we, we can determine whether it is CGI or not as well. Oh, um, okay. Cool. So, but it's, we're not just out to try and prove people wrong if that makes sense. No, you know, but you've also got to take a scientific approach yeah. about it somehow, haven't you? Because you're going to get yeah. someone doing it to you otherwise, aren't you? So you may as well oh, do it all yourself so it's all one big package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But generally... Um, if I'm quite honest, I've never come to that stage because um, when I do an investigation, I always tell the the witness exactly what I plan to do. Oh. And I will let them know, saying, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, if it's okay with you, I'm going to sort of hmm. enhance it or try and get a closer look. And generally, the, the, the forthcoming will that they're happy for me to do that. Right. So I think it was CGI, they probably wouldn't be happy to do that, if that makes sense. They'll yeah. be, no, I don't need to do that, blah, blah, blah. For this reason but they've always been um very cooperative and willing for me to do that so oh cool you're you're one of the lucky ones glenn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can't wait to get some reports from you soon i mean you've got you say you've got facebook page can you tell the audience then what your facebook page is and and let so they can contact you if need be it's under the name of glenn richardson ufo investigative researcher okay uh, and it's like i say it's a page where at the moment i'm just sort of keeping a subject of ufology in the public eye um and people can make their own minds up and people can go on and comment on it and have a debate whether they think it's real or not real mm. which which is good you know everyone's entitled to their own opinion yeah. um it's a free but, speech yeah free speech. Uh, but it's, it's, i'm sort of like i said i've been really busy with reports but at the moment i'm in the process of having my own website so i will have my own investigations on there and right as that time goes i'll be putting my own investigations on the facebook page as well right so people actually see what i do myself yeah um, uh, but also i we, i do a sort of a, a group page called british ufology with a gentleman called chris Munns. he was uh-huh. the one that designed it um and that's basically the same type of thing it's not an investigation as such it's just for people to share their own thoughts and pictures and things and whatever they want to discuss. I'm going to link up from my site under your guest page, which is where, where this uh, this interview will be put for people uh, to listen to. I'm going to put all of your website links there as well, just in case people can't 
you know just in, just makes it more convenient for people anyway yeah, it's yeah. going to be there and um it's been really interesting talking with you and i hope to speak with you as soon as possible it'd be brilliant yeah definitely thank you very much no thank you uh glenn and i look forward to having you on um when you get some more um reports and so everyone can have a little update excellent thank okay. you all right then glenn thank you and i'll speak to you soon take care bye See you. bye And now for In the News Around the Web. George W. Bush refuses to talk about UFO files. He appeared on the Jimmy Kimmel live show and I'm going to play you a little clip. We are back with President Bush. This is his book. It is called Portraits of Courage. And we will go through this and talk about some of the veterans that you painted and you wrote about. But first I want to ask you, this is a question that I think is very important to me and very important to the country. When you were in office, and I don't know when this happened or if it happened, did you go through the secret files, the UFO documents? <laughs> because if I Maybe. was president, that would be the first thing I did. You know, it's funny. My daughters asked the very same question. They did? Yeah. Would you be allowed to tell your daughters what was in those files? Uh, no. You would not? No. Now that you're out of office, you can do anything <laughs> you want, right? True, yeah. Uh, but I'm not telling you. You're not telling <laughs> You're not telling me what? Are you not telling me that you looked at them? I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> are there really great secrets that you know that you can't share with people? Yeah. Yeah, there are. <laughs> and you never write about them? No. It, maybe at a time in your life that no. you're like, oh, I'm 90, I'm going to do it. No. No, nothing. What if you What if you were to get like a little like loopy, you know? You get old and... Start drinking you again? Start, yeah, yeah, start drinking again. <laughs> Gamble, get some tequila. Yeah. You know what? So that was a little clip from late night talk host Jimmy Kimmel, who pressed Bush whether he went through UFO documents while president. It seemed to be a no brainer, really. I think he has. What do you guys think? Zach Bagans just scored the scariest piece of memorabilia to add to his twisted collection the original die book, die book box that inspired the movie The Possession. The Ghost Adventurers star tells TMZ he bought the wine cabinet allegedly haunted by a Dibbuk, a restless, evil spirit that can possess the living. If you're a believer like Zach, he says he's bought it from the, the guys who lent its evil backstory to 2012 horror film. The Dibbuk, Yiddish for malicious spirit, is commonly known as the world's most haunted object, Ooh. which explains why Zack paid tens of thousands of dollars for it. We're told he plans to showcase it at his haunted museum in Las Vegas, but will not display it opened. He's genuinely too terrified to do that. You'll have to be over 18 and sign a waiver just to view it. The Daily Star, lastly, um, UFO sightings hit all-time high as UK named hotspot for alien activity. Over 90% of sightings recorded in the past 100 years have occurred since 2000. In 1990, there were just 5,000, but in 2010, there has been a massive spike to around 45,000 sightings each year, an 800% increase. There have been at least 104,947 reported UFO sightings across the world since the early 1900s, according to findings by Sam Montfort, PhD student at George Mason University in the US. Montfort plotted the sightings on a heat map of the world. The UK and Australia were mapped as hotspots while he listed the US as the top nation for reports of alien visits. Just last month, a man claimed he captured what appeared to be glowing lights from a UFO hovering over Newton Abbott in Devon. Lancaster police also revealed they have been called on two occasions to reports of two unidentified craft flying over the county in 2014 and 2015. Could this be what I was on about earlier? Author Neil Spring, in his new book, The Watchers, claims there was even a top-secret probe 
by the Ministry of Defence into mass UFO sightings in Wales. In the US, around 2,500 sightings were reported per 10 million people, which is almost 300 times greater than the global average. The west coast and northeast of the US, including New York City, reported the majority of the sightings per person. So, they're on the rise, guys. Keep your eyes to the skies. I look forward to you joining me next week where I will be with Dan Litchfield, the co-founder of UK Ghost Hunters. We'll be finding out what entails in a ghost hunt, what sort of equipment, and also he's got some video evidence for us to be shared on the page. Check back next week. And But for now, enjoy your week and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.